Today, I want to talk about cognitive behavioral therapy. And from here on out, let's just refer to it as CBT. It'll be a lot quicker that way. One of the reasons why I want to talk about it is because it's without a doubt the most popular form of therapy today. And there's a few reasons for that, even though I don't actually agree with them all. The first one is because it's considered to be evidence-based. Now, if we do look into the evidence, we'll find out that it's dubious at best, but let's just go with the fact that people think that it's evidence-based. It's also preferred, if not mandatory, from insurance companies, which is really interesting because insurance companies are not mental health clinicians, yet they do tell mental health clinicians how to do their job. So if you are a psychodynamic therapist, like Freud here, or you're an existential therapist, you're not gonna get your services paid through insurance companies. So again, that's why you'll see most therapists do CBT. It's also in this day and age, we live in a very instant gratification type of world and a very superficial one, which goes very well with CBT because CBT usually handles the symptoms and not the cause. And it makes it very easy for therapists because you don't have to have a lot of world experience to be a CBT therapist. And it's also good for certain clients because they don't really want to walk through all their unresolved trauma. It's a very difficult thing to do. So it becomes very popular. And although it may not be the most helpful one, it's the one that they will sell to you the most. And that's probably the biggest reason why I want to talk about that today. So here's the whole basis behind CBT. It's that we have a thought, and that thought leads to a feeling, which then leads to a behavior. Now, how often does that actually happen, though, in real life? So with CBT, they say, well, if the behavior is not correct or dysfunctional or unproductive, what we need to do is change the thought, because if we change the thought, we'll change the feeling. Thus, we change the behavior. That's how simple this seems to be. But here's the problem. If we have a thought and it's unproductive, how do we change it? Typically, we just give a client something different to think about. So we snap our fingers and say, change that thought. How is that actually going to work? because the thought is actually a symptom, it's not the cause. So what would the cause be? Well, if you go down to this section here, if you're a person who can't answer the question, who are you? If you don't know who you are, you don't know why you exist in this life, you don't know what your meaning of purpose is, let's say, maybe you have low self-esteem, and you may have what I like to call emotophobia, fear of emotions. And these will affect your thoughts. So you can't just snap your finger and make a thought go away. It doesn't happen. It might work for an animal, let's say, because behavioral therapy was first used on pigeons and rats. And if you go to the San Diego Zoo, you'll see they'll have dolphins jumping through hoops. And that's a lot more akin to behavioral therapy. Now, let's take a look at this to see how true this really is. If you're feeling sad, it may lead to a bad behavior. And here I wrote, someone would self-soothe by, say, eating cookies. But it could be a lot worse than that. It could be doing alcohol or drugs. Or worst case scenario, suicide. So in this form, what we would want to do is, we obviously don't want somebody to commit suicide or do something negative. The sad feeling here, we would back that up and say, what are the thoughts that are creating that feeling? Well, let's take a look at it. If you've had a very difficult life, maybe you've had a lot of trauma in your life, you have people in your life, caregivers that are supposed to love you correctly, and they don't, Maybe you've been neglected in some way. Maybe there's some type of trauma in your life. Well, of course you may come up with a thought, I don't feel good enough, I'm not good enough, what's wrong with me? 
And of course you're going to feel sad. Well, CBT says, you know what, just change the thought. You're an awesome person. Just go to bed at night and say, change the thought. You're, you're more than enough. You feel great. How is that going to work? Well, I'll tell you how it works most of the time. If you lie to yourself, you know you're lying to yourself. That creates more anxiety. And now you're just one more person who's lying to you. And it makes you feel even worse. It probably leads to depression. So that doesn't work. Let's go on to another example. Let's say you're in this boat right here. Right? You're in the military. And you're fighting in World War II. So you're trying to storm the beaches of Normandy here. Now, up here on this cliff, we have the Nazis with their guns pointing straight down at you. What do you think your thought is going to be? You're 18 years old, so you have a life to live, and you're facing all this artillery straight down at you. Your thought is, I'm going to get killed. I'm going to die. And you would be properly scared. Okay, so then what's the behavior? Well, according to CBT, if you know you're going to die and you're scared, it would affect your behavior. You would turn that boat around and go home. And what would happen is you would let the Nazis take over the world. Does that work? No. What these people do is they understand that they may die. They are scared. But they act and they fight anyway. And that's what we call courage. Courage is a virtue. So again, CBT does not work like that. What we want to do is we want to be pulled into good behavior with virtues, values, and if you're married, your vows. I'll give you an example of vows. So you walk down the street. You see somebody. You're physically attracted to them. You talk to them. Now you're interested, you're emotionally attracted to them. What's the feeling? You might want to know them better, and you might feel a little lustful. According to CBT, what would be the next behavior? Well, you're probably going to cheat on your spouse. That's probably what's going to happen. So CBT would say, let's go back to here. We need to change the thought. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not attracted to this person anymore. How does that work? Does it work? We all know the answer. The answer is no. Fully functional people can be attracted, they can be lustful, and they can still go by their virtues, values, and vows in following a correct behavior. So to reiterate this, it's your virtues, your values, and your vows that pull you in the right direction. And you can also be pushed in the right direction by being able to answer these questions. Who are you? What is your meaning and purpose in life? And you will gain self-esteem by doing proper action in the right direction. And emotophobia we have to take a look at because people are so afraid of having an actual feeling or emotion, they think those emotions need to be changed like that. So you change your thought. Well, that could be a way to do it, but more than, more than likely, what you're doing is, is that you're not looking at the realities of life. It's okay to have a thought that creates a feeling that's very difficult for you. It's important to feel that, but you still have to behave in a correct way. Let's also take a look at this from another angle. Does your thought actually create the feeling? Because there's a lot of people out there that I have done therapy with, and I have known throughout my life, that they have a low to moderate or even an extremely high amount of natural anxiety. Does that come from a specific thought? Maybe, maybe not. A lot of the people I've talked to, you can ask them, why do you feel so anxious? The answer you're gonna get most of the time is, I don't know. And that's an honest answer. Because if you've had a lot of childhood trauma, some of it at the child amnesia stage between from the day you're born till you're about three or four years old, you're not going to be able to put your finger on exactly what your trauma is. But your amygdala, which is the fear center of the brain, still remembers. 
So if you're in a situation, you may have abandonment issues. You may fear rejection. You may have these just when you're talking to somebody you care about. So do you want to change your thought? Is that going to fix that problem? No, it will not. What you need to do is go back to the beginning and process the trauma. And that will help out the situation. So let's take a look at this from another angle. You can see how much I like CBT. Let me tell you what happened to me today, or not happened, but what I do almost every day. So I woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning to go work out. Let's go with the thought and the feeling, because it should predict my behavior according to CBT. I woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning. How do you think I felt? I felt tired. That's number one. Number two, I could barely move my shoulder joints at this point when I get up in the morning. So I felt uh, pain as well. What was my thought? My thought was, it'd be nice to go back to bed. That was my thought. So now we have a tired person who is in pain who wants to go back to bed. So according to CBT, what would I do? I'd go back to bed, wouldn't I? But I did not. What I did was I got dressed and I went to the gym and I worked out. Now, how did I feel when I worked out? Well, you sweat, you are experiencing pain because you're lifting things that you can't lift or that are very difficult. And so no, it, working out is not pleasurable to do. It causes pain. But when is the pleasure from working out? Right, afterwards, after it's done. So I'd like to uh, answer a question from one of my biggest fans here. I don't know if you can see her. Is she in the camera? So this is Lola right here. Hey, little girl. So Lola, <laughs> she might jump off here. She was nice enough to write out a question for me before this show because she's heard me say these things before. So her question is, and Lola's a girl too, by the way, she's 12 years old, and a lot of people have this question. Joe, it seems like you're saying that feelings are not important. Is that true? So here's my answer. Yes, feelings are extremely important. They give you clues as to what's going on inside you so you can explore further of why you feel that way. But more important than that is it's not as important as logic and reason. And that's what we have to look at. Because if you're a person who's highly traumatized, your thoughts, you're <coughs> gonna think that they're 100% real and you're gonna think that they're actually in reality, but they may not be. Now, the purpose of cognitive behavioral therapy is to challenge or change distorted thinking patterns. That part of CBT, I absolutely believe. But if you try to challenge somebody's distorted thinking, especially with someone who has had a lot of trauma, who already is extremely sensitive, they're extremely touchy, they are very easy to offend. And I'm not trying to make fun of anybody here. It's just, this is what you work with when you work with highly traumatized people. And I'm a human being too. It, I can be offended as well. The thought that you could stand eyeball or sit eyeball to eyeball with another human being, acting like you know more than they do, and you're going to take their thought and tell them that their thought is irrational or distorted or faulty, how do you think that's going to go? It's not going to go well. They're not going to accept it. They're going to get very hurt. And it's not, you'll probably lose a client. But worse than that, you're actually traumatizing them more. So what I would say is that feelings are important. But we have to worry about logic and reason first. Let me finish with this. If we put thoughts and feelings aside, sometimes, not all the time, what we can do is worry about the behavior first. Let's say my goal is to stay young, stay healthy. What I need to do is I need to eat well and I need to work out. 
so I will work out. That's the behavior. The behavior comes first. When I behave in a correct manner, I feel good about myself. And my thought is, wow, I can really do this. I can make commitments, and I'm a dedicated person who can be trusted. So do you see how it doesn't actually work from thought to feeling to behavior? It actually works by behavior to feeling to thought. Now, if you're the type of person, and I think we all are, if you know the difference between right and wrong, that's your answer. You do the behavior to get to your goal. Again, know who you are, what is your life purpose. Once you have that, you can live off of your virtues, your values, and your vows. And if you can live up to that and be congruent with who you want to be, then you will feel good about yourself. And that's really it. I'm going to try to do some other shows here where we video stuff. But I um, hope you enjoyed this, and Lola is saying goodbye, too. I will talk to you next time.